Hey everyone, uh, this is Mr. Beckstrom, and today we're going to take a look at a problem here. This is uh, optimization. It says maximize the area of the rectangle inscribed in the circle. So here's the rectangle. With the given equation, they give us an equation of the circle here, which is x squared plus y squared is equal to 4. Um, and they want us to write the objective function in terms of x and then solve it. Uh, so let's kind of go through this. Um, we want to, first of all, see what we're trying to maximize. And we're trying to maximize the area of a rectangle. So we definitely need to know what the area of a rectangle is. So, hold on one sec, get a better pen here. So the area of a rectangle is just uh, either base times height or length times width. We'll go with length times width. So it's going to be the length, we'll call that the vertical distance here, and the width, and we'll call that the horizontal distance here. Now, notice that uh, these corners of the rectangle are going to be on the circle. For example, in the first quadrant, it's going to be at x, y. And what that means is that if you go from the x value 0 here to this x value, so let's say we were going to go from 0 to 2, that would be a distance of 2. So this section here is just going to be whatever value that x is, right? And of course, since this is symmetric, this line segment here would also be an x. And let's look at the length here. Uh, going up and down. Well, let's say this was y equals 0 and this was y equals 4, then this part here would just simply be our y value, as would this part down here. Um, so let's look at the whole rectangle. The whole rectangle is going to have a length of 2x, x plus x, and the whole excuse me, width is going to be 2x, and the whole length here is going to be y plus y, which is 2y. So I can go into my objective function here, and I can already uh, make this change. So we said the length was equal to 2y, so I'm going to replace the L with a 2y, and the width is equal to 2x, so times 2x, and just to simplify that a little bit, we're going to get 4xy. So this is our objective function. And now we want to write it in terms of just x. So we need some type of constraint equation in order to go from x, or excuse me, from y's to x's. Because we want to replace this y with with some x's. And uh, if we look here, they give us the formula for the area of this circle. Now, if we recall, um, the area of a circle centered at the origin is going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to radius squared. So this is going to have a radius of 2, since 2 squared is equal to 4. But let's go ahead and solve for y. So the first thing I can do is just subtract an x squared from both sides of that, and I'm going to end up getting y squared is equal to 4 minus x squared. x squared. So that is, uh, just again, just subtracting x squared from both sides. And now we want to take the square root of both sides to get that y by itself. And remember, we're talking about distances here, so we're only looking for the positive uh, solution because technically we'd have both a positive and a negative solution, but uh, again, distance. So we're going to get y is equal to just the square root of 4 minus x squared. And that gives us our substitution that we need to go back in here and get this objective function just in terms of x. So the objective function is finally going to be 4, excuse me, area is equal to 4 times x times the square root of 4 minus x squared. And again, what we did was we just replaced this y 
with four minus the square root of four minus x squared because we came up with that using the constraint equation. Okay, now since we have it in terms of one variable, what we can do is we can graph it, and we're going to look for the highest point um, on this graph, and that will give us our maximum area because this uh, function is in terms, or the independent variable is area, and the dependent variable is our x. Um, but before we do that, let's see what values of x we're talking about. Well, let's say these points made their way to the top and the x got smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, then we know that our x has to be bigger than 0. I'm going to write it like this. So 0 is less than x, which is the same thing as x is less than 0. But x has to be less than, let's say we went this way. We went all the way out to this point here on the corner of the rectangle. We went all the way out this way. Well, what's the largest x could get? Well, since this has a radius of 2, like we said before, if you go from 0 all the way out to 2, 2 is the largest value. So x needs to be somewhere between 0 and 2, and we're going to use that to help us with our calculator. Okay, next we are going to take that function and put it in our y equals. So go to y equals, and I'm going to do 4x and then times the square root of 4 minus x squared. All right. So I got that function in there. Remember, I only care about x values between 0 and 2, not including the 0 or the 2. So I'm going to go to my window and set this x. Oh, let's first go to a zoom standard. And we can kind of get a little idea of it there. But now I want to go to my window. And I just want to look at x values between 0 and 2. So I'm going to set my window for my x's between a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 2. Now go back to graph here, and here is my function. So I'm trying to find what x value is going to give me this maximum y value uh, on top of this curve. So I can use the uh, maximum function in order to do this. So I'm going to do second trace, which is our calculate, number 4. So the first thing it asks for is a left bound. I just have to make sure this cursor is on the left side of the peak of this hill. So I'm going to hit enter. And then it asks for a right bound. So I just want to make sure it's somewhere on the right side of this peak. And now what I'm asking it to do is find the highest point between these two vertical lines, the left bound and the right bound. Enter. And there it gives me x is equal to uh, 1.41, uh, rounded to two decimal places. With a y value, this is going to be our area, remember, our dependent variable is equal to 8. So the largest that we can make the area of this rectangle is 8, and that's when we make our x value equal to 1.41. All right, if uh, you have any questions, please let me know, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.